Nice to see you here. Did your mother run a triathlon or something in Hawaii? Did y'all just go? Oh, no, she ran a marathon for 50 A marathon? Wow. Yeah. Hey, good morning. Hi, I'm Pastor Pete McNabb, and you are at First United Methodist Church in Terrell, Texas. We are so glad you're here. It's icy outside, but it's warm in here. Hope you're, uh, hope you're in a good spot where you can watch our worship service today. Our series, our sermon series of today is called Love Never Ends. This is part four, which is I Have Decided. We're starting in just a few minutes. Also, I want to share with you that we have a great baptism today. A baptism of a little, little, little infant. It's the daughter of Mark and Kendra Avery. Her name is Eden Elizabeth. So we're looking forward to that. I also want to share with you today is Holy Communion Sunday. So if you have some juice, some water, and some bread here, go ahead and get ready because I want you to, want you to take part in Holy Communion as well. We'll see you in a few minutes.
I've already got more than 65 here. I gotta go fix some more. Okay. <laughs> Thomas, it'll be good. I want you to be a part of that. So now it's time for our song of celebration. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Please stand as you're ready. If you'd like to follow along with our supplement, the little small black book behind the pew. It's going to be hymn number 2096. <laughs>
part of this. So I want you all to get a good look at these, these confirmations. We have more, and not all could be here today, but I wanted to just pass the mic and let you, uh, you guys come a little closer to the camera so you can see. Because you're next to me. Just give, give them your name and what school you go to. Uh, okay. So. Uh, Chloe Dunlap, Terrell High School. Okay. Michaela Castillo, I go to the Waxahachie High School. Okay. Drew Tatley, Terrell High School. Tyra Tally, Tara High School. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if I go to Terrell High. Okay, look at the left. Ashley Dunn at Terrell High School, okay? Debbie Bees, I'm the Sunday School teacher. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm Amanda Lewis. <laughs> All right. I want you guys to turn and actually kneel at the altar here. If you guys put my kneeling right here, just kneeling. And I, I just want to say a word of blessing on these quotes. Lord, as we begin this time, this time of study, that these confirmands are coming in, there's others who are coming as well. I ask your blessings upon their hearts as well as their minds as they grow in faith, as they grow as you did, Jesus, in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and humanity. And we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you all very much. I'll back your seats. And now my wife, Daria, has a few brief announcements for us. Due to the icy cold, we put off our monthly grief support meeting last Thursday night. So if you're going through a time of grief, please know that you're not alone. The Terrell Grief Support Group has started here at the, this church. And we welcome you to come share dinner and a walk with others who are going through this valley as well. We're here for you. The next dinner and meeting will be at 6.30 p.m. this Thursday, February 10th. Please RSVP to the church office so we'll have plenty of food. Now our lay leader, Ray Dunlap, has an announcement about some training coming up this afternoon. If you are on a committee as part of the laity, there will be training by Zoom today at 2 o'clock. So there will be a general session. In your bulletin, there is a QR code. So if you'll just uh, put your camera on the QR code, hit the button, it will take you to the Zoom meeting. Uh, from 2 to 2.45 will be a general session. Then if you're on the finance committee, you stay on that particular Zoom link. Other committees will have a different link with a pre-recorded session. So if you can't go right into it at 2.45, you can go back and pick it up at your leisure. So hopefully you will have time to do this. There's some very valuable information. Oh, wait. Also, um, also just to follow up on Ray, Hi. the Staff Parish Relations Committee, if you're on that, we're leaving at 12.30 for the parking lots. We're actually going to Silver Springs. So if you're on staff, there's a place we're going to plan for the road trip. So we're looking forward to heading out over there. Thanks. Thank you. Mark your calendars now for two Sunday mornings from today to be here in worship. We're going to have the Reverend Dr. Ron Saffron. And he's going to be, uh, we're looking forward to him coming uh, to hear him preach. We are blessed to hear him sing along with his family, including his wife Peggy and his daughter Liz Rimler, that y'all know, and his grandchildren Lexi and Luke Rimler for the cantata. He also was here Christmas Eve when he sang a solo with the guitar, Mary, Did You Know? Now we are blessed to hear this retired pastor proclaim the word of God. Let's all be here to hear his message on Sunday, February 20th. We're so glad, but we're so glad you're here in person or online. Please let us know that you're here. Why don't you do that right now? Register your attendance online and share anything that you'd like us to know. Please, uh, through prayer concerns or, or anything else, just go to fumctarrell.org and click on the, on the left-hand side. Thank you for staying um, safe during these uncertain times, and um, please wear your mask in the sanctuary. Thank you for your financial support for the ministries of our church. There are three ways you can give. You can place your gifts in the wooden boxes by the exits, or you can drop off your um, check to 503 West College Street, Terrell, Texas, or you can go online to our website and um, just click on that big red donate button. Now hear this call to worship out of responsive readings from the Living Bible. When Simon Peter 
Simon Peter realized what had happened. He fell to his knees before Jesus and he said, Oh, sir, please leave us. I'm too much of a sinner for you to have around. For he was awestruck at the size of their patch, as were the others with them, and his partners too, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Jesus replied, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for the souls of men. As, and as soon as they landed, they left everything and they went with him. Our next hymn this morning is going to be 436, The Voice of God is Calling, and I will be in the regular hymn. Please stand as you Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. 
Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believe. It's now my great privilege to invite the Averett family and friends to come on down for the baptism of Eden Elizabeth Averett. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without the price. So, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, what name is given this child? Eden Elizabeth. Eden Elizabeth. We're so blessed to have you here. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you, Mark and Kendra, renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? The answer is, I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, whatever forms they present themselves? I do. I do. do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord, in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. And then, will you, and I want to ask this question to you all, the sponsors that are here. Some of them from Washington, D.C., Atlanta, and Dallas. They're here today as sponsoring and being here and staying with the people at home also that are watching you right now, watching this baptism. I know from, uh, from other parts of the country, or, 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 or they couldn't hear today, but they're, but they're there with you. So I'm asking you, the sponsors and family, this question. Will you nurture Eden? in Christ's holy church, that by her teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. And your answer is, I will. Now, I'm going to ask you all, the congregation, according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church? and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Your answer is, we will. Amen. Now, I'm going to ask you, the body, also, will you nurture one another? This is on page 35, by the way, of your hymn. I'm going to turn to that. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith, alive, and include even Elizabeth Avery, now before you, in your care? Page 35, you got it with me? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Eden with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us join together now in professing the Christian faith as contained in Scripture of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? Your response is on page 35. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. Is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The waters of baptism. <laughs> so good to see you. Yes, you're doing so good. Can you see anybody out here? You're going to have to grab all the mic. You like the microphone? Okay. You see these folks over here? You like them? Yeah, yeah. Eden, Elizabeth, Avery, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We love you. The whole congregation loves you. You can see these folks over here. Let's go look over there and make sure they see them. See, these are some of the confirmation students, the confirmants. And someday we'll be doing that. We'll be like these students going we'll through confirmation. Wrong way to go. I'm sure it's in favor. Yeah. And this job. Uh, you were just wondering. Are you going to stay up here and preach for me? No. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, we have a special gift here. I just want to say a blessing on this. This is a gift brought from your good friends. You're uh, bringing this gift. Lord, I want to anoint this special time. May this be a symbol of your faith. May, may this child grow in newness as you grow in wisdom and stature, in favor with God and humanity. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. God bless you. Thank you all very much for being here, traveling so far, and also thank you all for being here. We want to be able to have you uh, be able to say hello afterwards to the neighbors up here at the front at the end. Did I forget anything? We got, a, we got a certificate, right? It's perfect. very good. So God bless you all. Thank you very much. Sin, number 344. Lord, you have come to the lake shore. We will sing all four verses.
our anthem this morning is going to be a song called Dear God, and it's written and performed uh, by Corey Azir. He got into one of the boats, 
one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and talked to people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water, put down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night, haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they, had gone, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they, Andrew and Peter, signaled to their partners from the other boat, James and John. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of, Zeb sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore left everything and followed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Can one sermon change your life? Can one sermon change your life? I, one changed my life. You may have heard me explain it before. I, I know I have. It was about 12 years ago. It was right before Christmas, actually, in 2009, when our pastor in Irving... David Turner came out from behind the pulpit, and he admittedly was one who said he couldn't sing. I mean, he told everybody, I can't sing. But he came out from behind the pulpit to sing anyway. Now, I'm not going to sing to you, but he started singing. If you're happy, then you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy, then you know it, clap your hands. You know that song. He started singing that song. There was something that happened in those moments, something that happened in that message that changed me. And that, that evening, after praying with Daria, I went home. I wrote an email to David. I found an email this week because I'm a pack rat when it comes to keeping emails. And so I found it. This was at 8 29 at night on December 20th, 2009. So, dear Pastor, your message on bearing fruit in today's sermon was truly a Holy Spirit inspired word. It ignited my thoughts on something I first considered when I was about 13 years old, but chose to ignore. A call to ministry. I went on to talk about lay speaking. It kind of came to mind. I wanted to explore with him some more. I sat down with David. We had two big wing backed chairs, and there was a little table in between us. And I brought to David, this was a few days later, I brought to him an application for me because in the few days since I felt that spark, I've gotten cold feet. And I, I kind of, I kind of applied, I brought in an application to become not a pastor, but something called a certified lay speaker. I completely filled it out and I was ready to go. And so I handed David a pen. Let me make sure I turn that off. Is everybody hearing me okay? Yeah. I'll be online. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are they hearing this? Okay. I'll let you know. Okay, all right. So I handed, I handed David a pen. Like I said, I was sitting here. He was sitting there. Little table in between us. There's an application for me to become a certified lay speaker and start taking some uh, classes that basically to be that. And David looks at me and says, so you feel God is calling you to be a certified lay speaker? And I said, yeah, if you just sign this document, I'll be out of my way. David looked at me, went to the document, took the pen, and he slammed it down. He said, I think God's calling you to do more. He got up and walked across the room. He picked up a book of discipline. He said, I believe God's calling you to become a pastor. And from that moment on, my life was changed. There are moments in life when change happens, like a switch being flipped, and suddenly you realize there's something going on here, and I've got to do something with it. And we see these stories. We see them throughout the Bible. We see a time when God is calling. It's like the cosmic, the universal, is calling the personal, the individual. And, you know, we may watch people go to church and do all their thing and talk about their faith, but it's time for the cosmic, 
for God to connect with you, the individual, when this happens, you just got to do something with it. You just have to do something with it. And we see that in the story of Peter. Because here's Peter, a good Jew, sort of, but not really. He, he sort of hung out with the wrong crowd sometimes. He was kind of belligerent, kind of tough to deal with at times. Probably gambled. A lot of things he was doing uh, uh, were not really helping the kingdom. But here Jesus says, I need to use your boat. And at that moment, Jesus got into his business. Jesus got into his boat. And he sat in the boat and he goes, okay. He wants to sit in my boat so he can project and be able to see people. But in those moments, Peter started to change. And after he preached, Jesus said, let's put out for a catch. And what happens? But Peter said, I've been fishing all night. We haven't caught a thing. He says, but if you say so, we'll go. And so they, they go. And the catch is so huge, they have to bring in extra boats to bring it all in. To bring it all in. And afterwards, Peter turns to Jesus and says, Away from me, for I am a sinner. Away from me, for I am a sinner. <laughs> Folks, it happened to Paul also. Paul was out persecuting the church. He was chasing down Christians, putting them in jail. And what happens, what happens is, Paul is going to Damascus. And on the road, literally, lightning strikes. And he's stricken blind. And he hears the voice of God saying, Why are you persecuting me? And he calls him to a new life. When the cosmic, when the universal meets the personal, it changes us. It changes us. It's like you're saying, I've got to do something with this thing. When God is coming into my life that powerfully. It happens to lay in Selena. Not, not that Selena, for the same, but a different Selena. One many years before, Selena Hastings. And Selena Hastings was living in the time of, uh, of the Wesleys, John and Charles Wesley. And Selena was, was uh, she was born into royalty. She was, she was born to be a countess. And she was, she was busy in her own way, doing charity balls and things like that, and busy raising children. That she was involved in that. Faith was just something she kind of did on the side. Maybe on Sunday, she might get involved in faith. But two of her sisters-in-law talked to Selena one time when Selena was very ill. And they presented to her their newfound faith. And this movement was taking place. This, this movement that was moving them. And it was, it was part of what's going on. There was the Wesleyan movement or the Methodist movement. And in those moments, she came to a saving faith, not just a little faith, but a saving faith in Jesus Christ. Selena went on to be basically, you might say, the patriarchess of the Methodist movement. And we've heard of John and Charles Wesley, but women were not allowed to speak, to preach back then in the pulpit. But this, this woman was significant in not only helping to encourage them, but backing them financially and making them a big difference in the Methodist movement. And so Selena, uh, she, she would go on to, to uh, after her husband died, to downsize. She downsized from her big house to a smaller house. She took her jewels and she sold them. The dresses that she used to buy all the time, she said, I'm just going to buy one dress a year, one new dress a year. She started giving so significantly to the Methodist movement that other friends of hers saw this and realized there's something more important than all the stuff we accumulate. And she started doing things like helping start a hospital for poor kids to go to. She started doing things like helping in the colonies, we were the colonies then, with the freed black slaves and relocating them to Canada, to new homes they could have in freedom. They had 3,000 slaves she paid to help relocate. And she started working with chapels to create chapels in England. And she would buy up real estate like theaters and office buildings, or things that weren't needed anymore, she would not turn them into chapels. Before she died, she founded 64 chapels in England. This lady, Selena, she became known as Lady Huntington. And today, there's a Huntington College in Montgomery, Alabama, 
named in her honor. It was a school for young women to attend, and now it's co-ed for men as well. And many people go there, including a, a U.S. senator and some others who've been at Huntington College for education, as the example of being all in for Jesus. Being all. So maybe that's the thing. Maybe, maybe in these moments when I was sitting there with David and he was saying, are you all in or not? Maybe when Peter was in that boat saying, are you all in or not? Maybe when Paul was on that road to Damascus and said, are you all in or not? Maybe Selena, when she was being healed and re realizing what's truly important, was being asked, are you all in or not? So, we don't have much time, but I want to tell you about a sermon that's, that John Wesley preached. He preached this sermon because of Selena. Because, see, he got to know her so well. And she was instrumental in looking at his sermons ahead of time. I don't let anybody like my sermon ahead of time. I guess it's true. <laughs> but, but she... She was pretty influential and knowledgeable and understanding and had a great theological sense about her. So he was going to give a big, a big sermon at, at Oxford at St. Mary's. And he showed her the sermon ahead of time. You know what she said? Don't give it. <laughs> and you know what? Smart man, he listened to her. He said, okay. He went back to his room and worked on another sermon. And that sermon today is the one I want to share with you just briefly. It's called The Almost Christian. The almost Christian. Like not there yet, but just almost. And this sermon inspired by Selena, who said, don't give the other one, give, give this instead. This sermon has a message that I think you need to hear. I think I need to hear. Because it said that really what was passing as quote unquote a good Christian was somebody that was really just an honest heathen. I mean, think about it. Oh, we really want somebody that's honest, you know? You're, I mean, if you're an honest heathen, well, well, hey, that's a good Christian, honest heathen. And, and oh, did you know Jesus? But you know the devil knows Jesus. You know, the demons know Jesus, and they shriek. You know, that they don't want to be around Jesus. They know who Jesus is. They, the devils know that, that Jesus was, came as a human being, that he was crucified on the cross, rose from the dead, rose from the dead. He sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. The devils know this stuff. The demons know this stuff. So if you're just an honest heathen, we're passing that off as called good Christian. Wesley had a problem with that. He was calling us to a deeper faith and a higher love. And he points out that faith which does nothing doesn't bring forth righteousness or repentance. There's really no faith at all. No faith at all. Wesley challenged the congregation that day. It was on July the 25th, 1741, when he gave this sermon for the first time. He challenged the congregation at, at Oxford that day to have a faith which purifies their hearts with the power of God. He wants, wants you and me to, to, take a, to, to, to move away from pride, from anger, and desire from all unrighteousness, the filthiness of the flesh. He urged them to be filled with love stronger than anything else, both to God and to humankind. A love that does not work, that does, that does the work of God, a love that endures. Wesley called them to move from being honest humans to being almost Christians, to being all together Christians, to being all in. So I'm going to ask you for slight participation. I'm going to ask you if you're all in. I'm going to invite a response that if I'll stand in, that if I'll say the word yes out loud about 12 times. So it's icy outside. I'm going to wrap up this sermon with your up and down. And at least you stay up and keep saying yeah. But here, here are these questions he asked the people at Oxford. And this sermon has been resounding ever since in Methodism. Is the love of God shed abroad in your heart? If you say yes, say yes and stand. Yes. Can you cry?
cry out, my God and my all. Yes. Do you desire nothing but God? Yes. Are you happy in God? Yes. This is the commandment written in your heart that he who loves God loves his brother and sister also. Yes. Do you love your neighbor as yourself? Yes. Do you love every person, even your enemies, even the enemies of God, as your own soul? Yes. yes. Do you believe that God loved you? Yes. And gave himself for you? Yes. Do you believe the Lamb of God has taken away your sins and cast it as a stone in the depths of the sea? Yes. And do you believe that you are indeed redeemed by his blood? Yes. And finally, last one. Do you bear witness with your spirit that you are a child of God? Yes. yes. Go forth from this place and receive the Holy Communion with the knowledge that you have decided, like that old song says, you have decided to follow Jesus. Now, I'd like my help to come down to the Holy Communion. And we're going to have an opportunity. I'm going to invite all of you to come to Holy Communion today. And it's a time for us to read together. Let's turn to page 12 in your hymnals. You may be seated, brother. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Together, merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be in the of church. We have not loved you with Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. On page 13, the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and right, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the house. Blessed is you who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the house. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the Spirit. On the night in which you gave yourself up for us, you took bread. Gave thanks to you, broke the bread. Gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup. Gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many who make the greatest of sins. Do this as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is high, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit, let's go to you. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ. We may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one to Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. And so Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at this heavenly banquet. For your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, 
now and forever. Amen. I want to give you some instructions. The first thing is to know that this is not just the Methodist table, this is God's table. This is Christ's table. It's open to all. And so we want you to know that you are welcome to come down. All who profess and say they decided to follow Jesus are welcome to come down. Now for some instructions, uh, Ashley and I will stand here and receive people down this aisle. And if you come down here, you'll have the bread, and then she'll have an individual cup for you. I'll give you, I'll tear off a piece of bread, an individual cup for the body, the body and blood of Christ. And you'll depart this way back to your seats over here. Now after a while, we'll get to you folks, and you'll come down this aisle that's right here, and, and go back out this way. So. So if we can we can do that, that'll keep us orderly and moving. Also, I want to share with you that we'll be collecting a an offering, a communion rail offering here for Serenity Corner to benefit people who are, who are in homelessness or housing insecure in our community. You can set this on the edge over there. Or housing insecure that they could uh, could have the blessing of sometimes a shelter to be in, sometimes food. Things that we have to make a difference, but more, more than just food and shelter, love. Love that we give through our church and many other churches to serenity. So, with that being said, why don't you come?
Thank you for being a part of worship service today, whether you're online or in person. Know that each of us has a decision to make, to be all in for Jesus. May today be that day for you. Our closing hymn is what? Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. What better one? God's great. Amen.
body of Christ broken for you, my sister.